Hello, and welcome to our daily Bible reading program, where we are reading the entire Bible in a year. This is week 19, day 2. Today we'll read 1 Samuel 28 and 29, 1 Chronicles 9, and Acts 19. 1 Samuel 28, verse 1. In those days the Philistines gathered their forces for war to fight against Israel. And Achish said to David, Understand that you and your men are to go out with me in the army. David said to Achish, Very well, you shall know what your servant can do. And Achish said to David, Very well, I will make you my bodyguard for life. Now Samuel had died, and all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in Ramah, his own city. And Saul had put the mediums and the necromancers out of the land. The Philistines assembled and came and encamped at Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel, and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams, or by Urim, or by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek out for me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself, and put on other garments, and went, he and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, Divine for me by a spirit, and bring up for me whomever I shall name to you. The woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and the necromancers from the land. Why then are you laying a trap for my life to bring about my death? But Saul swore to her by the Lord, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? He said, Bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Do not be afraid. What do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I see a god coming up out of the earth. He said to her, What is his appearance? And she said, An old man is coming up, and he is wrapped in a robe. And Saul knew that it was Samuel, and he bowed with his face to the ground and paid homage. Then Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Saul answered, I am in great distress, for the Philistines are warring against me, and God has turned away from me and answers me no more, either by prophets or by dreams. Therefore I have summoned you to tell me what I shall do. And Samuel said, Why then do you ask me, since the Lord has turned from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done to you as he spoke by me. For the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor David. Because you did not obey the voice of the Lord and did not carry out his fierce wrath against Amimelech. Therefore, the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will give Israel also with you into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons shall be with me. The Lord will give the army of Israel also into the hand of the Philistines. Then Saul fell at once full length on the ground, filled with fear because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten nothing all day and all night. And the woman came to Saul, and when she saw that he was terrified, she said to him, Behold, your servant has obeyed you. I have taken my life in my hand, and have listened to what you have said to me. Now, therefore, you also obey your servant. Let me set a morsel of bread before you, and eat, that you may have strength when you go on your way. He refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, urged him, and he listened to their words. So he arose from the earth and sat on the bed. Now the woman had a fattened calf in the house, and she quickly killed it. And she took flour and kneaded it and baked unleavened bread of it. And she put it before Saul and his servants, and they ate. Then they arose and went away that night. First Samuel 29 verse 1. 
Now the Philistines had gathered all their forces at Ephek, and the Israelites were encamped by the spring that is in Jezreel. As the lords of the Philistines were passing on by hundreds and by thousands, and David and his men were passing on in the rear with Achish, the commanders of the Philistines said, What are these Hebrews doing here? And Achish said to the commanders of the Philistines, Is this not David, the servant of Saul, king of Israel, who has been with me now for days and years? And since he deserted to me, I have found no fault in him to this day. But the commanders of the Philistines were angry with him. And the commanders of the Philistines said to him, Send the man back, that he may return to the place to which you have assigned him. He shall not go down with us to battle, lest in the battle he become an adversary to us. For how could this fellow reconcile himself to his Lord? Would it not be with the heads of the men here? Is not this David of whom they sing to one another in dances? Saul has struck down his thousands, and David has ten thousands? Then Achish called David and said to him, As the Lord lives, you have been honest, and to me it seems right that you should march out and in with me in the campaign. For I have found nothing wrong in you from the day of your coming to me to this day. Nevertheless, the lords do not approve of you. So go back now, and go peaceably, that you may not displease the lords of the Philistines. And David said to Achish, But what have I done? What have you found in your servant from the day I entered your service until now, that I may not go and fight against the enemies of my lord the king? And Achish answered David and said, I know that you are as blameless in my sight as an angel of God. Nevertheless, the commanders of the Philistines have said, He shall not go up with us to the battle. Now then, rise early in the morning with the servants of your lord who came with you and start early in the morning, and depart as soon as you have light. So David set out with his men early in the morning to return to the land of the Philistines. But the Philistines went up to Jezreel. First Chronicles 9, verse 1. So all Israel was recorded in genealogies, and these are written in the book of the kings of Israel. And Judah was taken into exile in Babylon because of their breach of faith. Now the first to dwell again in their possessions in their cities were Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the temple servants. And some of the people of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh lived in Jerusalem. Athai, the son of Amimahud, son of Omri, son of Emri, son of Bani, from the sons of Perez, the son of Judah, and of the Shalonites, Isaiah the firstborn and his sons, of the sons of Zerah, Jeul and their kinsmen, 690. Of the Benjaminites, Salu, the son of Meshalam, son of Hadaviah, son of Hashanua, Abania, the son of Jeraham, Elah, the son of Azai, son of Mekri, and Meshulam, the son of Shephatiah, son of Raul, son of Abinai, and their kinsmen, according to their genealogies, 956. All these were heads of fathers' houses, according to their fathers' houses. Of the priests, Jedidiah, Jerareb, Jachin, and Azariah, the son of Helkah, son of Meshulam, son of Zadok, son of Meroth, son of Atub, the chief officer of the house of God, and Adadiah, the son of Jerham, son of Pasher, son of Melchizedek, and Masai, the son of Adal, son of Jehazerah, son of Mishalem, son of Meshalemeth, son of Emmer, besides their kinsmen, heads of their fathers' houses, 1,760 mighty men for the work of the service of the house of God. Of the Levites, Shemameah, the son of Hashab, son of Azarkam, son of Hashabiah, of the sons of Merari, and Bakbarkar, Huresh, Galal, and Mataniah, the son of Micah, son of Zerkai, son of Asaph, and Obadiah, the son of Shemaiah, son of Galal, son of Judathan, and Barakiah, the son of Asa, son of Elkaniah, who lived in the villages of the Nephilites. The gatekeepers were Shalom, Echub, Talmon, Hyman, 
and their kinsmen. Shalom was the chief. Until then, they were in the king's gate on the east side of the gatekeepers of the camps of the Levites. Shalom, the son of Korah, son of Ebiseph, son of Korah, and his kinsmen of his father's house. The Korhites were in charge of the work of the service, keepers of the thresholds of the tent, as their fathers had been in charge of the camp of the Lord, keepers of the entrance. And Phineas, the son of Elizar, was the chief officer over them in time past. The Lord was with him. Zechariah, the son of Meshaliamiah, was gatekeeper at the entrance of the tent of meeting. All these who were chosen as gatekeepers at the thresholds were 212. They were enrolled by genealogies in their villages. David and Samuel, the seer, established them in their office of trust. So they and their sons were in charge of the gates of the house of the Lord, that is, the house of the tent, as guards. The gatekeepers were on the four sides, east, west, north, and south. And their kinsmen, who were in their villages, were obligated to come in every seven days, in turn, to be with these. For the four chief gatekeepers, who were Levites, were entrusted to be over the chambers and the treasuries of the house of God. And they lodged around the house of God, for on them lay the duty of watching, and they had charge of opening it every morning." Some of them had charge of the utensils of service, for they were required to count them when they were brought in and taken out. Others of them were appointed over the furniture and over all the holy utensils, also over the fine flour, the wine, the oil, the incense, and the spices. Others of the sons of the priests prepared the mixing of the spices. And Metahiah, one of the Levites, the firstborn of Shalom, the Korhite, was entrusted with making the flat cakes. Also some of their kinsmen of the Kothites had charge of the showbread to repair it every Sabbath. Now these, the singers, the heads of fathers' houses of the Levites, were in the chambers of the temple free from other service, for they were on duty day and night. These were heads of fathers' houses of the Levites. According to their generation's leaders, these lived in Jerusalem. In Gibeon lived the father of Gibeon, Jael, and the name of his wife was Mecca, and his firstborn son, Abdon, then Zer, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nebad, Gidor, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth. Mikloth was the father of Shemem, and these also lived opposite their kinsmen in Jerusalem with their kinsmen. Ner fathered Kish, Kish fathered Saul. Saul fathered Jonathan, Makashua, Abinadab, and Ishbal. And the son of Jonathan was Merab Baal, and Merab Baal fathered Micah. The sons of Micah, Pithon, Melech, Terah, and Ahaz. And Ahaz fathered Jerha, and Jerha fathered Elimeth, Azaveth, and Zimar. Zimar fathered Moza, Moza fathered Benia, and Raphaea was his son. Elisha, his son, Azil, his son. Azil had six sons, and these are their names. Ezekam, Baruku, Ishmael, Shera, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azil. Acts 19, verse 1. And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples. And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. There were about twelve men in all. And he entered the synagogue, and for three months spoke boldly, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. But when some became stubborn and continued in unbelief, speaking evil of the way before the congregation, he withdrew from them and took the disciples with him, reasoning daily in the hall of Tinius. 
This continued for two years, so that all the residents of Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. And God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were carried away to the sick, and their diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sceva were doing this. But the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I recognize, but who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them, mastered all of them, and overpowered them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this became known to all the residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, and fear fell upon them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was extolled. Also many of those who were now believers came, confessing and divulging their practices, and a number of those who had practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all, and they counted the value of them, and found it came to fifty thousand pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily. Now after these events... Paul resolved in the spirit to pass through Macedonia and Achaia and go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. And having sent into Macedonia two of his helpers, Timothy and Aratius, he himself stayed in Asia for a while. About that time there arose no little disturbance concerning the way. For a man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Armitius, brought no little business to the craftsmen. These he gathered together with the workmen in similar trades, and said, Men, you know that from this business we have our wealth. And you see and hear that not only in Ephesus, but in almost all of Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away a great many people, saying that gods made with hands are not gods. And there is danger, not only that this trade of ours may come into disrepute, but also that the temple of the great goddess Armetius may be counted as nothing, and that she may even be disposed from her magnificence, she whom all Asia and the world worship. When they heard this, they were enraged and were crying out, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! So the city was filled with the confusion, and they rushed together into the theater, dragging with them Gaius and Aristarchus, Macedonians, who were Paul's companions in travel. But when Paul wished to go in among the crowd, the disciples would not let him. And even some of the Azurks, who were friends of his, sent to him and were urging him not to venture into the theater. Now some cried out one thing, some another, for the assembly was in confusion, and most of them did not know why they had come together. Some of the crowd prompted Alexander, whom the Jews had put forward, and Alexander, motioning with his hand, wanted to make a defense to the crowd. But when they recognized that he was a Jew, for about two hours they all cried out with one voice, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! And when the town clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, who is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is temple keeper of the great Artemis, and of the sacred stone that fell from the sky? Seeing then that these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rash. For you have brought these men here who are neither sacrilegious nor blasphemers of our goddess. If, if, therefore, Demetrius and the craftsmen with him have a complaint against anyone, the courts are open, and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another. But if you seek anything further, it shall be settled in the regular assembly. For we really are in danger of being charged with rioting today, since there is no cause that we can give to justify this commotion." 
And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. That concludes our reading for week 19, day 2. Join us tomorrow for week 19, day 3. We'll read 1 Samuel 30 and 31, 1 Chronicles 10, and Acts 20. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you've not done so. Hit that notification bell. You will be alerted every time there's a new video available. As well, share the good news of the Word of God with others. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great and wonderful day.